Here's more wrestling news for September 21st, 2022, and we're starting off with Monday Night Raw, as on the latest show, Matt Riddle and Seth Rollins confirmed they will fight at Extreme Rules, but not in any ordinary match. Instead, the bout will be inside the Fight Pit, an MMA-style match that has been used before in NXT and will be making its main roster debut next month. This match will be hard-hitting to say the least, and it could also mark the return of a legend of wrestling. When a fan on Twitter said that the Fight Pit would be the perfect match for Ken Shamrock to officiate, this got a response from the wrestling and UFC legend who is fully on board with the idea. Shamrock, one of the biggest names in UFC, actually made his WWF debut as a guest referee, officiating the Steve Austin vs. Bret Hart Classic from WrestleMania 13. Despite being one of WWE's biggest names in the Attitude Era, Shamrock is one of the very few names that has never been brought back, but perhaps that will all change in the fight pit at Extreme Rules. Shamrock is certainly hopeful of a WWE return in this new era of the company, but even if it doesn't happen, the world's most dangerous man is enjoying what he's been seeing. After the announcement of the fight pit at Extreme Rules, Shamrock took to Twitter to say that interesting things have been happening as of late and that he's very excited to see what is next. Shamrock isn't alone in his assessment, as Triple H has received the resounding approval of fans and wrestlers alike since being appointed WWE's head of creative. According to recent reports, Triple H has several more surprises up his sleeve and plans to keep fans engaged, and with the rumored return of Bray Wyatt, as well as returns we know will eventually happen like Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton, the present and future of WWE is looking strong. For over two years, Roman Reigns has dominated the WWE as world champion, ruling over his kingdom with an iron fist. The Tribal Chief unified the WWE and Universal Championships at WrestleMania and has dispatched of all comers since then, but there will be a time when he will lose the gold. Speaking to NBC Sports Boston recently, WWE superstar Ricochet gave his prediction as to who will be the one, and while he didn't put himself forward, Ricochet's choice is a lot more… electrifying. The Rock, just the best in the world. Who else is it going to be, you know what I mean? The Rock is just, I mean, I don't even know what to say. What can you say? He can do anything he wants to. Ricochet's comments are certainly interesting, as while rumors have suggested a Rock vs. Reigns match for WrestleMania 39 next year, this is the first occurrence of a current day superstar other than Reigns speaking about the match as if it's a guarantee. The Rock has cleared the first quarter of his 2023 movie filming schedule, leading to more speculation that he will be stepping in the ring with his cousin, but whether the Great One will be the next undisputed WWE Universal Champion, only time can tell. In August, Kurt Angle returned to Monday Night Raw in Pittsburgh and seemed to have a blast in front of the WWE Universe again. Kurt was part of a segment involving both the Alpha Academy and the Street Profits, but there could be something even bigger in the works. During an appearance on the Rassing Show, the Olympic gold medalist was asked about signing with AEW and said he wouldn't forge a deal with Tony Khan as it would interfere with his current WWE contract. Given that Kurt was part of the 2020 releases, it's unclear exactly what deal he has, but he added that he's been talking about maybe doing something at WrestleMania. Fans have forgotten that Angle's last match came back at WrestleMania 35 with a loss to Baron Corbin, an opponent that many felt was the wrong call for the Olympians' departure from the ring. Whether Kurt wrestles at next year's event, just makes an appearance, or doesn't show up at all, only time can tell for sure, but there's something going on big enough to keep the former WWE World Champion away from AEW. We've certainly heard a lot as of late about wrestlers returning to the ring, as it's not just Kurt who is expected to lace up his boots again. It was reported last week that Ricky Steamboat will compete for the first time in 12 years this November, and Ric Flair recently commented that hearing Steamboat's news makes him want to wrestle again. Now Hacksaw Jim Duggan has weighed in about his own career, but don't count on him running the ropes. Speaking to Wrestling Inc., Duggan refused the idea of having one more match, joking that he's lucky he doesn't pull a hamstring getting off the couch. The first ever Royal Rumble winner recently completed a much more serious battle as he defeated Cancer for the second time in August, so we can't exactly blame Hacksaw for taking it easy, despite what other legends are saying. Over to AEW now, and part of what makes MJF work is how he refuses to break character even when far away from the ring. 
Many fans have been on the receiving end of MJF's scathing barbs online as he's no fan of theirs. While speaking to Brandon Walker on wrestling, MJF trashed wrestling Twitter, calling them out by saying, My problem with wrestling Twitter is it's not real life. You guys will put people over on there that are garbage at f***ing wrestling, aren't good at talking, are good at nothing. But they post funny videos online and you're like, that's the guy, someone sign him. It's stupid. Then there's the other flip side. You need to be watching NJPW, CMLL, because this guy. You guys are watching clips and being like, this guy's one of the top 10 wrestlers in the world. They are not. Despite his comments about fans, many people in the AEW audience can't help but love to hate MJF, and with a shot at the AEW world title in his hands, MJF's future looks to only get better from here. Earlier this month, Edge was written off TV with an attack by the Judgment Day as all four members delivered a beatdown on the September 12th Raw. On the following episode of The Bump, it was reported that Edge had suffered a grade 2 MCL sprain, almost certainly a kayfabe injury, and one that won't keep him off TV for long. No timetable was given as to when fans could expect Edge back, but that type of injury usually takes two to four weeks to recover if the rated R superstar is actually hurt. WWE has given no time when Edge will be back, but it's not expected to be far away, as his image is being used for the poster for the Extreme Rules Premium Live event. Of all the people on the poster, Edge is the only one yet to have a match, but it looks like that could all change soon enough with the return of the former world champion. Now, before he made a name as one of WWE's most popular commentators today, Pat McAfee made a name for himself in the NFL as a punter, kicking for the Indianapolis Colts. McAfee was a highlight successful member of the team, and he may soon be earning a prestigious accolade. It's been confirmed that Pat is in the running for the Pro Football Hall of Fame Class of 2023, and that the final 15 nominees for the Modern Era category will be revealed in January next year. McAfee's career in the NFL began in 2009 and would end in February 2017, citing a third knee surgery over four years as the reason for ending his career. Having punted 575 times in 127 career games for a net average of 23,048 yards and a total of 26,669 yards, McAfee certainly seems to be Hall of Fame material. Right now, McAfee is away from WWE, but will return next January after the college football season ends, and he could be returning to SmackDown as a Pro Football Hall of Famer. Following AEW All Out earlier this month, Tony Khan made the difficult decision to remove some of his very top stars from programming as punishment for the backstage fight. CM Punk, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks were all stripped of their titles and suspended, forcing the promotion to go on ahead without some of their biggest names. The decision to suspend all four men has been controversial, and on his Click This podcast, Kevin Nash made it clear he's not a fan of the idea. You're 1099s. You know what that means? That means you were painting somebody's fucking house and you got guys into a fight and they told you you're all suspended. So they're the fucking cop that fucking shoots the guy 23 times in the back and sits at his desk? That's an effective way to fucking manage. What a bunch of shit. Big Daddy Cool isn't alone, as many believe that Khan shouldn't have suspended the four men, but instead tried to work this into an angle for TV. While the Bucks and Omega will be back, the future is unclear for CM Punk who was recently blasted as bitter and brittle by Eric Bischoff, so Tony Khan may not even have the shot to book this as an angle, if that even is the plan at all. When Braun Strowman was released from WWE in June 2021, it came as a shock to everyone. Strowman, despite some stop-start pushes in the world title picture, had consistently been treated as a big deal on the main roster, so to fans, the decision to release him came out of nowhere. Now Strowman is back, and now that he's a WWE superstar again, doesn't plan on going anywhere else. Appearing on After the Bell, the Monster Among Men addressed his WWE return, which he hopes is the last promotion he works for. I always said in interviews, and people thought I was stupid for it, I said I would never put on a pair of boots for anybody besides WWE, and I stuck to my word. I never put on another pair of boots. I went out and started my own thing, worked for myself, gave young talent a place to come and work, made a living, honed their craft inside CYN. Like I said, I stuck to my guns. I will never wrestle for anyone other than myself or WWE, and here we are. 
Strowman is a founding member of Control Your Narrative, and with his return to WWE, the EC3 promotion has cancelled all events and a tour, with the company's future looking bleak. This Friday, Strowman will have his first match back in WWE when he takes on Alpha Academy's Otis, the first of what Braun is hoping will be many matches in this latest chapter in WWE. We've got some unfortunate news from Kushida next, who will not be competing at today's event with New Japan. Kushida was slated to compete in a live, non-televised event on September 21st in Kumamoto, but as PW Insider reports, he is out after suffering with a fever on Saturday. When Kushida was tested, his result thankfully came up negative, but doctors later diagnosed him with a suspected skin disease. This is the last thing Kushida needs, and we certainly hope for a speedy recovery, but for now, the former WWE NXT superstar is on the shelf indefinitely. And we're ending today with more from AEW, as it was in February that Cody and Brandy Rhodes left, three years after being co-founding members of the promotion. It hadn't been too long earlier that Cody had said he was going to stay with the promotion for good, but AEW has been able to carry on without the American Nightmare. Speaking to Ariel Helwani this week, MJF spoke about his so-called best friend and explained why the reaction in AEW wasn't good, but wasn't bad either. It wasn't favorable in the sense that, yay, Cody's gone, but favorably in the sense that we're all professional wrestlers and what happens when somebody leaves is, it opens room for opportunities for another person to step up to the plate. When big names leave, big names step up. That's just how this business works. MJF is certainly one name who has stepped up with Rhodes Gone, with many considering him one of the brightest stars in AEW today. Whether MJF ends up leaving AEW for WWE as he's teased, only time will tell, but we imagine that Tony Khan won't want to lose any more big stars after the Rhodes departure this year. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.